What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Lucas and in this one I'm going to be telling you one way that you can feel much better in your life. If you guys enjoy this video please make sure to subscribe because it helps my channel to grow and I greatly appreciate that. Human emotions are a rather complicated thing and there's a lot of ways that you can feel better in your life and there's a lot of potential reasons as to why you typically don't feel so good in your life. Uncomfortable emotions are usually pointing us towards the fact that we're not getting some kind of need met. So when we're hungry and we feel uncomfortable because we're hungry, that's a sign that we're not getting some kind of need met. When our back hurts, it's a sign that we should probably do some yoga. We should probably stretch. We should probably get some movement going on in there. When we feel lethargic and lazy, that's a sign that we should probably be exercising more. Now, there's a lot of ways to feel better, like I said, but I'm going to be specifically focusing on just one thing that contributes to a lot of your discomfort, whether it's... Uh, emotional or mental, and even uh, physical, actually. Now, in the past, I've talked about eating well or whatever, things like that, getting some exercise to feel better. And that's pretty simple, common, basic stuff. But this one is going to be about one thing. One thing, that's it. Dropping your body tension. And that is actually extremely hard for most people to do because we are so tense in our bodies because it's a habit that we have created. Now, we typically think of the mind as one thing and then the body as some other thing. And this is nothing more than a complete load of crap. The mind and the body, there's absolutely zero distinction between the two until you create the concept of mind and body, until you actually make that, distinct, that distinction with your mind. Think of your mind as a pair of scissors. That's what the intellect is. It's making these distinctions and it's cutting up reality. So this blank sheet of paper, for example, will be reality. <laughs> And now we have the mind, which is these scissors. And what the mind is doing is it's going into reality and it's cutting it up, it's chopping it up into a million different ways. Body, mind, and now we hold them as separate. Good, bad, now we hold them as separate. Me and others, and now we hold them as separate. Myself and the rest of the world hold them as separate. And it goes into all these sort of uh, categories. It creates all these very uh, nuanced and complicated distinctions and we can keep on doing that forever we go molecules atoms quarks strings and we just keep on making more distinctions and then we have glass water plastic hair eyes nose mouth cheeks uh, pain pleasure and what our mind is doing is it is um, just slicing up reality and it's very subtle with the ways that it does this. It doesn't say, here I am, I'm slicing up reality, I'm gonna make everything appear as though it's all separate. Instead, what it actually does is it just creates the distinction and then it tells itself that that had no effect on anything. So thought actually shapes up a large amount of how we actually perceive the world and then it denies that it does that entirely. I believe that's a David Bohm quote. So thought creates the world and then denies that it does so. And where I'm going with this is this distinction between the mind and the body and we hold them as separate. When really there is no real distinction between mind, body, self, other, blah, blah, blah. Until we come in and we make that distinction. So one way to feel tremendously good in your life is to drop your body's tension and habitually drop it because your body tensing up is a habit that you have created. 
because when we experience some, some sort of trauma, we store it in our body in the form of tension because the mind and the body are not separate things. Okay. There's no duality between these two things. There's no border separating these two things until we create that fundamental distinction between mind and body. And then we have the mind body problem, the age old uh, question. <laughs> but once you reach a certain level of consciousness, uh, you realize that there is no mind body problem and that there's no mind body problem to solve. The mind body problem gets dissolved. But uh, topic for another video. So when we experience some sort of mental trauma, we store it in our body. Okay. And we store that in the form of physical tension. So we uh, clench our, you know, fists and, you know, we do this, we're getting angry. Or our gut is going to be tense. Your legs, your jaw, your shoulders are going to be up like this. And you're like freaking out, you're too scared to let them go. And all this tension that we hold in our body, it boils down to fear. We create these boundaries between ourself and other out of fear. That's what these uh, tensions are. That's what these traumas are. There's something that happened to us and we're trying to isolate ourselves from that thing that we didn't like. And we're doing that by creating a, a physical wall within us, which is just tension. And the problem with this is that we're safe. Okay, I want you to realize right now that you're safe. You're safe. Your life is not in danger right now. You don't have to be tensing up like this. Your shoulders are up. Your gut is sucked in. You know, you're tensing your abs. Your legs are murked. There's knots in them. It's disgusting. <laughs> like, you're safe. We don't have to be on, like, a high alert mode. You can drop your body tension. But the thing is, is that you can't. Because you're too unconscious. Because you've built up this habit for years and years and years. So then your most, your, your usual, your, your usual state is just tension. And sadness. And anger. And anxiety. Because you're so goddamn tense. Because you're holding on to these emotions. That's literally what this tension is. It is the emotion. Now... The simple thing to do here is to let it go, is to drop the body tension. But it's just not as simple as that because like I said, this is a habitual thing. So if you were to drop your tension right now, oh, in five seconds, it's gonna be coming back unless you've been practicing dropping your tension and you're more conscious of it. Now, the problem with holding a lot of tension is that this will affect every single area of our life. This is going to affect our creativity and our ability to make money, our happiness, our emotions. Our thoughts are going to be foggier. Our mind's going to be more clouded. We're going to have crappier relationships. No area of your life goes untouched by this because when you are tensing up and you're building these physical boundaries between you and the rest of the world, there's no space left for you to get involved with the world because you've separated yourself off from it because you're scared and you're tensing up. <laughs> and now <laughs> there's just a load of unnecessary boundaries between you and the world. And this video, um, when I say boundaries, I'm using this within a certain context. So let's say uh, you're in a relationship or something. You can create some healthy boundaries. Um, but... What I mean by boundaries in this video is just the tension that we create as a way to escape reality. And that escaping reality mechanism uh, is responsible for the vast majority of your suffering, which I'm going to be talking about uh, towards the end of this video and I've talked about in some of my previous videos. So the one simple tip for feeling significantly better in your life is to stop being so tense all the time. Okay? Can you do that? Can you practice that? The thing is, is that because this is a habit we've built up, 
Now we have to create the habit of undoing it. And a great way to do that is by having a daily meditation practice. And before I got, go off about meditation, um, this is not about, you know, meditating. You know, it's not about meditation. What this is about is a practice that we can use to relate to our own selves in a functional way. Okay, we want to actually have a practice that can align us more with something truthful as opposed to our own fears and our own tensions and our own blockages. And meditation is a great way to do that because what meditation essentially is, is it's self-study. You're studying yourself. Okay, you sit down and now notice what's happening inside of you. Noticing your thoughts, noticing your tension, letting your tension go. It comes back a second later, you notice it again, you let it go. And you do this over and over and over again until you reach a point where you aren't tensing up 24-7. Where you don't feel like you have to be so anxious or depressed or pissed off about something because you've let it go. Because these emotions and these thoughts aren't stored in some like brain database, okay, they're very much tied to every other part of your body because the body is an interconnected system, okay? It's not just like you have some bad memory and you throw it in the back of your head and it's gone. It's You're tensing up and you're storing it somewhere in the form of, yeah, just physical tension. And this is going to be somewhat challenging to undo because we're so unconscious. Humans are completely lost in thinking. We are 100% lost and controlled by our thoughts the vast majority of our life. Thoughts dominate us, <laughs> or at least the vast majority of humans. Thoughts, beliefs, and emotions hijack us, okay? We don't really take control over them they, most of the time, take control over us because we're so unaware of how they work and we just don't give them the necessary attention. And the reason why we don't give uh, our thoughts, beliefs, and emotions and our own selves overall the necessary attention that it needs to function properly is because we don't actually care about ourselves. That's the only reason. The only reason why you don't have a meditation practice which I use in quotes, you don't gotta sit there like this, uh, sitting down, totally still, is probably the ideal way to do it. But really it's about studying yourself, it's about figuring out what the hell is going on inside of you and just observing it, concentrating on it, observing it with clarity and bringing equanimity to the situation, which I'm gonna be talking about shortly. But the reason why you don't do that is because you don't actually care about yourself, okay? you spend the vast majority of your time looking outward on YouTube, looking outward on, I, I don't know, anything, eating food, playing video games, watching YouTube, watching reruns of Seinfeld, watching sitcoms, getting drunk and going to parties, uh, I, I don't know, anything. You spend 99% of your time looking outward entirely without actually studying what's going on inside of you without taking any attention to it because you don't care. Because if I were to tell you, hey man, why don't you study yourself? You don't care. <laughs> you couldn't care less. For the majority of people at least. You know, it'll be like, oh man, like what a waste of time. That's not very productive. It would be better if I just went out and earned a bunch of money. And that's great. But the thing is, is this machine right here, this human system, is the most complicated fucking system on the planet, okay? This is the most complex machinery that we, we've used this to create every other type of machinery on the planet. And the thing about 99% of people, this is kind of turning into a rant, the thing about 99, 95 to 99% of people is they haven't decided to sit down and read the user's manual about how they function. We're operating the most complicated machinery 
and we don't even care about how it works. We don't, we don't care about understanding it. Instead, we care about what Kim Kardashian posts on Twitter or like the keeping up with the Kardashians or smoking a bunch of weed and getting drunk or what this person said at work or, or at school. We don't care about what is happening right here, right now within ourselves and what even is ourselves? What the hell does it even mean to, to be a self, to even exist? What is that? We don't even care about that. We don't care about what this present moment is and what's going on right here, right now because we're too stupid, <laughs> because we're not wise enough to see the value in that. So, I'm gonna chill out for a sec. Feeling better is complicated. You could have some sort of, uh, you know, problem with your neurochemistry in your brain, which is making you depressed. I wouldn't jump to such radical conclusions, but a lot of your suffering is just your tension, okay? And you have to make a concentrated effort to remove this over and over and over again. It's gotta be rather rigorous. And I don't see many people doing that because they don't care about themselves because they genuinely don't care about what's going on inside of them, which you can live your life that way, fine. There is going to be a lot of goddamn consequences with that path and it's not wise at all. Okay, you're going to be easily irritated because you're already tense. Obviously, it's you know, one little thing you're snapping because you're already holding a whole bunch of tension. You know when people do exactly what I just did? That's a very subtle mechanism that our body is automatically doing when we are a tiny bit tense or <laughs> way too tense or when there's energy that has to be blown off. <laughs> and it's a very uh, useful strategy. I went to a meditation retreat a month and a half ago and I was noticing how... Um, how much I'm stuck in thought, one, and how to actually sort of let some of this mental energy just be free. And just like that, I realize that just like that, I can just get out of my head and you're circulating the energy by your breath. It's your body knows this at a very deep level because it naturally does this. Whenever people are tense and then they need some kind of release, there's that release on the exhale because intuitively your body knows this is too much. We got to calm down. So your life is going to be dictated mostly by the state of your body. Okay. Not even much by your, your actual thoughts, to be honest, your thoughts. Yes. But the quality of your thoughts has way more to do with how your body is operating right now. Because if you're tense and you're anxious and you're angry, the quality of your thoughts goes way down. But if you're loose and you're spontaneous, now you can be way more creative because a whole bunch of energy has been freed up. You're not so um, contracted into your tension and your emotion. You feel more expansive. You feel more flowing with life. You feel more happy. There's just less suffering that's going on when you're not tensing up all the time. Because when you're tensing up, it's a subtle form of rejecting this present moment. And when you're rejecting this present moment, you're rejecting what is true. Okay, this present moment is true. This is existence. This is the truth right here. This is real. Okay, right here. This is real. And when, when we're rejecting what is real, that creates a disconnect between ourselves and reality. And we feel that disconnect. We feel it within 99% of our psychological and emotional suffering. And that disconnection from reality is the cause of 99% of our psychological and 
emotional suffering. It's not because Becky is uh, a bitch or this person did that to me and now I'm so pissed. It's an inability. The majority of your suffering, 99% of it, is an inability to open up to this present moment exactly as it is without needing to change it. And you can change the present moment if you're in a horrible relationship. I recommend getting out. You know, you can rearrange things in your life. Obviously, I'm not saying you can't change anything. But you have to create time to drop everything that you're doing, drop your tension, and be totally still with this present moment exactly as it is, and use that stillness, bring concentration, clarity, and equanimity to it to rewire yourself or purify yourself at a very deep level. So you can change things in your life. I'm not saying you never change things, but what I'm pointing to is a very uh, elaborate mechanism for distracting yourself and running away from reality, which is very natural within the human system. We're all kind of doing it. And it, it becomes a problem. So like I said, this is the most complicated machinery on the planet, right here. You. 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 What you call yourself as a human being, okay? We'll keep it simple. That's the most complicated machine on the planet. Now moving on, another way to feel better that ties in with all of this is stop trying to feel better and instead get better at just feeling. Because to release our tension, we have to be very good at noticing our micro and our macro tension. We have to actually develop the competence and capabilities that we need to actually feel into our body and resolve this problem. And to do that, we need a high quality feeling ability, which no one really has because they don't develop it, because they don't care, and because we're so stuck in our head. Okay, you can think about feeling your body. That's not feeling your body. You're stuck in your head. You can think about all this. That does nothing. The thoughts you have about this do absolutely nothing. What I'm pointing to is not a thought. What I'm pointing to is using pure feeling and pure awareness to undo a lot of our emotional garbage, okay? Emotional, physical, and mental tension. Thinking about this isn't going to get you too far. And if you're trying to feel better, you're already trying to escape the present moment. You're not facing your emotions head on right here. And at times, it's okay to distract yourself from your emotions, as long as you're actually aware that you're doing so. Let's say you have an overeating coping mechanism, which basically everyone has, or you distract yourself with TV when you're bored, for example. You're bored, so now you go entertain yourself. What are you doing? You're trying to escape your feelings. You're trying to escape your boredom. And it's okay to entertain yourself, but just notice what, what are you doing? Read the user's manual for your own system. What are you actually doing there? It's not just, okay, Lucas, I'm just watching TV. What's the big deal? No, no, no. You're doing something very profound. You're purposely rearranging reality to attempt to fit you, fit your little selfish needs. You're rearranging everything to try and manipulate your system. But that isn't going to actually fix the problem. That's just... A short-term solution that ends up making it worse in many cases. And sometimes, like I said, it's fine to distract yourself from your emotions, but you have to be aware that you're doing so because the awareness of that will naturally, naturally fix the problem. When you're honest with yourself and you're aware of what you're doing, that, that naturally fixes it. Now, going back to meditation quickly. You don't have to do 18 hours a day like a monk. Do one minute. One minute. You have one minute. Okay, you have one minute a day. Okay, and then 
try and do two because you'll notice it feels good. You're sitting down, you're dropping your tension. That's all you got to do. Just drop your physical tension and just feel into your body's physical tension and just drop it over and over and over and over and over again for one minute. And you'll realize, holy crap, this feels amazing. My mind feels amazing. I'm more creative. I'm clearly like happier. My mind's clearer. I can think properly. I feel more lubricated and I'm able to actually function in reality way better than I was before because before I was like a concrete brick. My body felt like a, a concrete brick. Why does it happen? Why, why am I making it that way? Why am I choosing to hold this tension? I should be practicing this and then I can learn to relate to people from a place of ease. Not even just a place of ease, but from a place of uh, acceptance, really. A place of um, just a willingness to take on reality head on. A willingness to see what's true, to embrace what is true just for the sake of truth, to embrace what's real just for the sake of embracing what is, what is actual. Meditation just happens to be a great way to do that. So stop trying to feel better. Learn how to feel instead because your inability to actually feel your emotions uh, cuts you off from a lot of your happiness and also cuts you off from feeling a lot of your sadness and actually going in there and fixing a lot of these blockages that you're holding within your body because all your traumas are stored in the form of tension in your body. So you can actually notice that when you're sort of scanning your body and you're being aware of it, uh, certain areas can give you certain thoughts that arise in your head because there's an association between the two, between a specific place in the body and a specific thought that you know you sent there so you can notice that so don't try to feel better instead simply feel that basically sums that up now uh, you can check the description because i'm going to have these four formulas posted in the description i, I hope it's uh not blurry or anything i know it's not exactly the clearest in the video check the description okay for very clear and just uh i've typed it in the description so it's clear. But basically, I've been using these four formulas that I got from a man named Shinzen Young, one of my favorite uh, teachers of non-duality and just uh, enlightenment and awakening and consciousness. One of my favorite teachers. Uh, I recommend checking him out. And I got these four formulas from him. Basically, formula number one, we have suffering equals discomfort times resistance. And our suffering is dominantly created by some sort of discomfort, whether it's emotional, physical, or mental, and our resistance to it. And that resistance pops up in the form of tension. We're tensing something, okay? What's going on in our mind is gonna have an effect in our body as well, and vice versa. It's like I said, there's no real distinction between mind and body. They're one interconnected system. Purification equals discomfort, uh, times the sum total of concentration, clarity, and equanimity. Now, equanimity is the exact opposite of resistance. So if resistance is um, fighting reality, then equanimity is fully accepting reality. And in order to really purify yourself, to rewire yourself, that's all that means. It doesn't mean cleanse your sins. To rewire yourself, to purify yourself, this is just to rewire yourself, like I uh, just said, I didn't mean to say it like that. You're re rewiring your system at a very deep and primordial level. You're changing how you're relating to discomfort. So discomfort uh, times the sum total of concentration, clarity, and equanimity brings uh, purification. Now, I'm going to go back to the suffering formula really quickly. I just want to explain these first two because they both involve discomfort. So we can have one unit of discomfort times 10,000 resistance, which then eads and uh, equals <laughs> uh, 10,000 units of suffering. So we can have very minor discomforts, but we bring a bag of resistance to it. And now we're really overreacting to things, which is how the vast majority of human suffering works. 
Purification happens when we have discomfort, obviously plus the sum, or multiplied by the sum total of concentration, clarity, and equanimity. And this brings about very empowering uh, experiences of discomfort. And if we can bring uh, resistance down to zero, which is possible, we can have very dis, uh, uncomfortable experiences without any suffering because anything multiplied by zero is zero. But that takes uh, training and systematic practice. So when we have discomfort times uh, concentration, clarity, equanimity, this is radically rewiring how we relate to our bodies on a physical, mental, and emotional level and our own tension. Remember, the key here is your physical tension. You have to drop that. Moving on, we have frustration, which is pleasure times resistance. And a good example of this is people who have a lot of pleasure in their life, but they can't get the fulfillment that they actually want. And resistance, what it is, is basically the interference with the natural flow of things. So resistance is when we interfere with certain feelings arising and certain feelings passing. So when we feel an uncomfortable feeling happen, we start resisting it. We don't want it to happen and arise. And when we notice pleasure fleeting and you know going away, we hold on to it, which then frustrates us. So we can have a lot of pleasure, but then not get any fulfillment or uh, any real lasting fulfillment, really. It just frustrates us more and more. Lastly, we have fulfillment, which is pleasure Pleasure times the sum total of concentration, clarity, and equanimity, which this formula here also includes purification. So experiencing our moment-to-moment -moment experience of reality with concentration, clarity, and equanimity is how to purify yourself, your consciousness, your mind, your body, your emotional system. Bringing concentration, clarity, and equanimity equanimity to pleasure or pain is how to purify consciousness, which I talked about in my how to purify consciousness video. So we don't have to go through discomfort to purify ourselves. We can go through pleasure as well, as long as we have a complete experience of it. We're being present with the experience of it and presence, what that is, is it's concentration. We're concentrating on it. We're giving, our, we're giving it our mental energy. We're bringing clarity to it. We're not judging it, whether it's good or bad or this or that, this shouldn't or shouldn't happen. We're just watching it. We're concentrating on it. We're applying our witnessing awareness, no thoughts about it. We're not good, bad, this, that. Concentrate and watch plus equanimity, which is an allowing aspect. So we give it our attention. We watch it and we allow it to happen. That basically wraps up this video. Now, for this video to have any sort of impact on you, you have to honestly do these practices, okay? I made a video on how to manifest anything that you want, uh, as long as it's like realistic, you know, unless you wanna manifest, uh, you know, jumping to the moon, but yeah. And that involves thought plus action equals experience. So we take a theory and then we put it into action and then we get the experience. And that's what I'm proposing that you do here with this video. It's not just listen to me, great idea, wow. And then you go and you tense up all day and you distract yourself with ice cream or something and watch Netflix. Although you can eat some ice cream and watch Netflix, that's fine. You have to set aside time every day to be unwiring this habit. And even as you go throughout your day, stop and notice what's going on. Even you can just be walking. Right now you can just notice you're tensing up and just stop tensing up, let it go. And then in five minutes you do it again. And then in five minutes you do it again. You have to actually create the intention to unwire this habit and then act on it. So that's basically it for this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe because it helps my channel to grow, helps YouTube to push out my content and I greatly appreciate that. Thank you guys so much and peace out.